Here we're moving on to a binomial probability distribution and then looking at the mean, standard deviation, and the histogram. So here are the number of trials, six, probability 0.75, and they want us to construct the binomial probability distribution located here. So we'll use our Excel document we just created. So six and then 0.75. I put that in there. And then quickly, it's done. See, that's why we did all that work in the last part of the video. It's because now we have our binomial distribution. So here are the numbers. Let's just move this over. And there we have it. And you can have this um, you know, rounded off to whatever de many decimal places you need. You can see 0 0.0002, the 44, that raises the th 3 to another 4. These are the correct numbers for this graph here. They're looking at the probability, not the cumulative, but this one here goes to 6. So it's done in basically a second. No work at all. Okay, let's go back. Then what we want to do now is compute the mean and the standard deviation. Now on my setup, I already have the, the formulas for the mean and standard deviation, and they're pretty basic. We just need to take the number of trials, so equals the number of trials times the probability. Times the probability there. So there we go is the mean. And once we have the mean, we can get the standard deviation by taking the square root of the mean times 1 minus the probability. So that's not a bad formula. So I'll just do equals square root parentheses. And then we'll have the mean times parentheses 1 minus the probability, which is over here. And the parentheses and end the other parentheses. And then click enter. So there's my mean and standard deviation. 4.5 and 1.06. 4.5, 1.06, 1 1.1, 1 decimal place. Okay, so not bad. Formulas are pretty easy, they're just in the book, and you just, now they're calculated no matter what you change, and everything else stays being calculated as well. All right, now we're just going to create the histogram. So if we go down here, we have four choices. This one's the correct one. How do we get that in Excel? It's a little bit of work, but we can do it. And when you want to create the histogram, you come down here to the probability distribution and you highlight your probabilities for each one of these. And then you insert a, a column chart here. Click this one. So it's different in the fact that you only select one row and that's just the probabilities. And then we go in there and we kind of alter them a little bit. So you're going to go in here and you're going to click the uh, click the x axis here these values until you have it so that that's highlighted like that. Then you're going to then you're going to right click on them. So have it highlighted right click and then you're going to click select data. So you're selecting the data you want. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit that data on the right and select this information here all the way down to that and click okay. So what that did for the horizontal is it changed the inputs as the values over here. And then once I click OK, now you see it starts from 0 and goes to 6, and that's what we had here. Now it needs to be a histogram, so we can change that as well. If we click here and right click, so we want to right click and then format data series. And then take the gap width and go down to 0%. And then that's going to be the histogram. Now we can leave that just like that and it will update automatically. There is a few things we need to change, but let's go back here and look at the histogram here. And there's our, our histogram. So you can see it matches up pretty well. They put the mean in there. You have the mean, so you can put it, you can just visualize it yourself 4.5 in there as well. Okay. Now, the only problem with this is that that histogram will need to be updated. For example, if we had more trials than six, if there were seven, eight, or nine, or you know more, more than six, then this will have to be updated. So if we had 10 trials, then this updates to 10, but this doesn't update to 10. So what we need to do is go in here and update these values. So if I click on the graph, it shows what I need, what I have here, and all I do is just pull them down. Pull it down to 10, 
and then the graph updates. So it's pretty easy to update your histogram to get the correct histogram. Click it and it'll show the values that aren't being considered. Like if it was only out to seven, you'd see, okay, I just need to pull it down. And now it will update and you can see the correct histogram for 10 trials. And if you had more trials like we had there and you go back to six or something, it'll just show the blank area and it'll show a histogram. And it's correct, it's just showing some blank areas after it. So that's how you find the mean, standard deviation, and a histogram for binomial probability distributions. It has been shown with binomial distributions that as the number of trials incre increase, the more uh, bell-shaped the distribution becomes. And so this is good for finding out if something is, is um, unusual. So that's what we're going to look at here. But we need a few things to do that first. Here's the problem. We have 60% of adult smokers. Um, so that's our percentage. And then compute the mean and standard deviation. We need those two pieces of information. Uh, that started before 18 of 100 trials. So we have 60%, 100 trials. So I'm going to put that information in. So 100 trials and 60%, 0. 0.6. Okay. So then that gives me my mean of 60 and my standard deviation of 4.89. Let's go back to there. Mean of 60, 4.89, which is 4.9. Perfect. We've got the mean and standard deviation. Now you can do the part B yourself, but what I'm interested in here is part C. It says, would it be unusual to observe 90 smokers? Now why, how can we figure that out? Is it unusual for 90 smokers to have started before the age of 18? Well, what we have to think about is we have to go back to what it means to be a bell-shaped curve, right? If you have a bell-shaped curve, you're going to be, the average will be the middle or the mean, okay? And to be unusual, it must be on that outside 5%, either above two standard deviations of the mean or below two standard deviations of the mean. So we have to show first that this normal probability distribution is bell-shaped. And how we do that is with this formula here. So if this formula is greater than or equal to 10, then it will be bell-shaped. So we're going to insert that formula. Equals NP, which is course the mean times 1 minus probability and then enter and if that number is greater than 10 then it's bell shaped and if it's bell shaped then 95% of all observations will fall within stu two standard deviations of the mean then we're able to find if something is unusual or not so we're going to, over here, we're going to find out what are the lower bounds, so two standard deviations below the mean and above the mean. So that's pretty easy. Just take equals the mean, and I'm going to subtract two times standard deviation and hit enter. Over here, I'm going to do above the mean, two standard deviations, so that plus two times this one. So there is the lower and upper bound of two standard deviations of the mean. Now we go back to see our number. Is our number outside of this? If it is, then it's considered unusual. And our number is 90 smokers who started before 18. Is this unusual? And we look, and 90 is above the 69.9, so we say, yes, it is unusual. And that's why the answer is yes, because 90 is greater than two standard deviations above the mean. So this will fall within the less than 5% chance of happening. So, and I don't have a, a histogram here that will work because this information, it goes to 100. If we extended this to 100 and extended my histogram, then I'll, I could get it to work. So maybe I'll do that. I'll pause it and I'll show you the histogram. There you go. What I've done is I've taken this and made it all the way down from 0 to 100. And you can see that this graph here is basically a bell-shaped graph. And then the mean would be right in the middle and within two standard deviations. And you can see that 90, which is way over here, is obviously unusual, right? Here would be the usual stuff, and then it's way outside. So this would be considered unusual. So that's the video on probability distributions.